Hey guys, this is New Sensei. A while ago, I made a video covering differences between stabilizers. A more expensive stabilizer is more stable. So it might have been a little vague. Many people are still confused over exactly how to set up your stabilizers, and this is a very good point. In archery, a lot of things are driven by preference. But if you're a beginner, you don't really have a concept as to what preference means because you haven't established the things that you like and don't like or don't feel right in your archery experience. So it's very hard to say preference and actually have any meaning. So the goal of this video is to provide some more guidance as to what to look for when setting up your stabilizers. As a disclaimer, this is the sort of thing where you have differing opinions from everyone. Every athlete and every coach will have a slightly different setup and a slightly different preference. You can have three different coaches and four different opinions. So I'm not going to prescribe the one way to do things. Instead, I'll show you what people are doing and why it's done. Firstly, why do we need stabilizers? If you take a look at a typical bare bow, then you'll know that it's light and simple and easy to use. You just pull it back and bang, you're on target. However, the light weight of the bow also makes it more difficult to stay on target. It tends to float around a bit more and you are more prone to errors. And this will be more pronounced if you're shooting a heavier draw weight and you're actually trying to hit a small target. Stabilizers change the mass and balance so that it's much easier to keep a stable shooting platform. Additionally, the bare bow does have a tendency to lift up when you are aiming and shooting. There are several reasons why. The first reason is the mass of the bow changes when you draw it back. The limbs will bend backwards so there is more weight towards the back of the bow. The second reason and the more pronounced reason is the grip is not in line with where you are drawing the string. And that means there's a natural imbalance where you are pulling slightly above the grip and that means you will naturally lift upwards. And this is a normal part of shooting Berbo. You have to compensate for that by pulling it down. But that's where stabilizers come in. By adding weight towards the front of the bow, it makes the bow front heavy when you're holding it here, but when you're at full draw, it balances out. And that means that it's much easier to keep the bow on target. Stabilizers also help in controlling vibration, especially if you use rubber dampers at the end of your rods. Without stabilizers and dampers, you may find that you have a lot more hand shock when you let go of the string. Now of course if you're hunting or you're doing 3D shooting or otherwise you're walking around the woods, a long stabilizer isn't really going to work because there are too many things in the way, you smack down branches and bushes, so you can get short stabilizers. I don't have one with me right now but the principles are very similar. The short stabilizer is a very compact weight. It's very short, which means that you can't bring it out far enough to really bring the bow down, but it does add mass to the bow. And having more mass means it's going to be more stable. It's slightly far forward, so it might just be enough to tilt the bow forward when you're pulling it back. And it also helps with vibration. It's not the same as a long stabilizer rod where you can have more control over where the balance will be, but if you're limited for space, especially again if you're hunting or 3D shooting, then you might find that a short stabilizer is good enough for what you need it for. Generally speaking, a bow with a short stabilizer should be easier to handle than a bow without a stabilizer. For target shooters, this is what you're playing with. The point of the long stabilizers is to balance your bow. For you engineers out there, you might recognize these as pitch, roll, and yaw. So your bow can move this way, it can move this way, and it can move this way. Now the stabilizers can help in controlling this movement and this movement. The other way 
which is yaw in engineering terms, is most controlled by your hand. So the stabilizers can help make it more steady, but it's not directly going to help you keep it under control. And that's not really the main cause of most of your problems. This is where the questions frequently pop up. How exactly do I choose the right stabilizers? How long should the rods be? How much weight should I put on the end? What angle should the side rods be? Again, there are so many different ways to do this. People will experiment, coaches will test things, and in the end, a lot of things will work and some people will swear by certain setups. I'm not going to go to that argument, I'm simply going to explain why people set up the way they do. Remember, the goal of the stabilizer is to bring the weight slightly forward so that it brings the bow level when you are shooting it. Additionally, adding mass will also increase the stability of the bow. Those are the two fundamentals you need to know when choosing how to set up your stabilizers. As I mentioned earlier, what you're aiming for with the stabilizer is to move the weight slightly forward. Why slightly forward off the grip and not in the grip? Remember, when you're pulling the bow back, or the string back, the limbs will bend back. That will shift some of the weight towards the grip. So you're trying to maintain balance at full draw, not when you're holding it in your hand like this. Exactly how far should be in front of the riser is where people would disagree. Now, a lot of tuning manuals will recommend around four inches in front of the grip, so around here. Other coaches will say, oh, it should only be an inch in front of the grip. And the result is that, well, the further you are from the grip, the further the center of balance will be when you're at full draw. And this is where, again, people will differ. So some people want the bow perfectly balanced in their hand at full draw. Others might feel more comfortable in having the weight slightly more forward so that it pulls the bow down a bit more. So if you're an archer who knows that you have a tendency to slip upwards, then having the weight further forward might be a good thing. Whereas certain others might have a lot more control over their draw and shot process, so they don't need that extra compensation. That's what you're trying to balance out and experiment. So how do we measure the center of balance? Do you consider your bow when it's fully set up? That includes all your stabilizers, any other mini stabilizers or dampers or weights, and the sight itself. All of these things will add weight to your bow and change the way it's balanced. There are two planes you need to measure. There's the vertical plane and the horizontal plane. Let's do the vertical one first. To find the balance on the vertical plane, turn the bow sideways and suspend it from a single point. Now, if you have a hook, this is easier, but you can do it with your hands. It just moves around a bit. So what you need to do is to hold the string in a way where the bow is perfectly balanced. If it tips over, then you move your fingers to where it will be steady. That's where the center of balance is. So in my case, uh, my bow is configured correctly. I do have the weight on the center of the bow where the grip is. So that's pretty much where I think it should be. If you find that it goes this way or that way, it will indicate that your bow is bottom heavy or top heavy, and that might need to change. To find the balance on the horizontal plane, same thing, you need to spin it from a point where the bow is upright. Now, a lot of people use the sight bar or the stabilizer rod if you have one, so you need to hold it here and find out where it's balanced. You can see where my hand is, we draw a straight line down, it's just in front of the riser. There. And again, if I hold it, um, say, up here at the front of the sight, it will tip backwards. So that's not where center balance is. It's much closer to, let's say, there. So I'm not holding the bow, I'm just letting it rest there. And it's about there, which is where I want it to be. If the center of balance is not where I want it to be, that's when I'll change things around. Now for the most part, your standard stabilizer set that you get from your beginning kit, whether it's a single long rod or a basic long rod and V-bars and side rods, that's usually enough to keep the bow in balance. So you don't need to tinker around a lot. 
But the shift of a few grams either way can make a big difference once you get to the level where you can feel the difference. So how do I know that I have the right length? Remember, there is no one correct length. Just understand that the longer the rod, the more the weight will pull it down. That's just a basic explanation of the physics behind it. So if you have a longer rod and you have the same amount of weight compared to a shorter rod, the longer rod will have more of that downward pull. This applies to all the rods, long rod and side rods. So basically, if you need to push the weight further forward, you can get a longer rod to fulfill that purpose. Some people will also use an extender, which is an extra bit between the V-bar and the riser to give you that extra length. There is an interesting caveat when it comes to using an extender. If you're using the extender to push the weight forward, but then you add extra weight on the back to counterbalance that extender, that use the extender. That just makes sense. A lot of people will get the extender as part of the package or they think they need one. But really, if you feel more comfortable with the center of balance slightly close towards the riser, then you don't need the extender. The extender is only there to give the extra length that your rod doesn't have. Um, this could be an extra 8 inches on top of your 28 or 30 inch rod. Generally, the longer rod gives you more control. It's easier to fine tune the weight and balance with a longer rod because it gives you a larger range of options in terms of how many weights you use and so on. It doesn't mean that a shorter rod is useless. Basically, you just have to compensate for the length and the weight. So if you're using a shorter rod, but you still want a uh, point forward of the grip as a center of balance, you need to put in more weight. That's simply it. So the physics will equal out in the end. A short stabilizer means more weight at the end, whereas a long stabilizer means less weight on the end for the same effect. If you're not sure, just go for the middle option. You can get a 28 inch stabilizer and you have more than enough control for what you need it for. You can buy 10 inch side rods and you're okay. You can get longer ones, but I think that if you're starting out, start in the middle and then start experimenting with longer or shorter rods based on what you feel needs to change. Regarding the angle of the V-bars, uh, you can get straight V-bars, you can get angled V-bars, or you can get adjustable V-bars. So in terms of exactly where to put the angle, again, experimentation and trial and error. What you need to consider is that by moving the angle downwards, you're moving the weight downwards, which is good if you have a top heavy bow. So the riser design might be more heavy on this side, so you want more weight on the bottom to compensate and balance it out. In my case, I do have a top mini stabilizer, so it makes sense for me to move the weight slightly lower to get that perfect balance which I want. Um, I could remove this, and have a straight stabilizer um, and that makes sense as well uh, but for me I like to see it kind of looks cool plus it adds a more uh, mass and more vibration control so I may have to move this downwards to get that balance that I need. Do be aware that if you're moving the weight downwards by changing the angle then it will shift the weight forward slightly as well so that might mean you have to change the other angle this way um, or change the weight on the front to compensate. Regarding the horizontal angle coming this way, remember that the narrower it is, the easier it is to cant your bow because there's less effect on the outside. If you swing it all the way out, it's more stable, but again, it brings the weight further forward. Plus, having like a giant cross guard for your stabilizer might interfere with the people next to you. You might have come across swinging weights. These are narrow rods with weight at the end and it dangles off the bow. And you might be wondering what, what's that used for? The problem with a solid rod is that it's a static weight. You can't change it when you are shooting. That's fine when you are shooting at a flat target range and you're shooting at a target at a set distance. But if you're shooting in a field environment where there might be slopes or uneven ground, suddenly this balance is something you fight against. 
If you're shooting like at a high angle upwards or if you're aiming at a very low target, this weight is now going to pull you down that way. So the swinging weight counteracts that. Because it always gets pulled downwards due to gravity, it will change its angle based on your own angle. So if you go high, the weights will swing forward. If you're going low, the weights will swing backwards because that's where the gravity is pulling downwards. It doesn't matter where you're aiming, it's always gonna be dangling down this way. And that helps you maintain balance in an uneven environment. It can be used in target situations, though most archers are fun calibrating solid rods for that purpose. Regarding how much weight you put on the end, there's a simple rule. The more weight you have, the more stable the bow will be. Simply, a heavier bow will be less likely to move around loosely. And this can be especially useful in windy conditions. That's why bare bow shooters in competition generally prefer heavier risers. They can add weights on the riser to add more mass within a certain diameter, but apart from that, they can't use long rods to do the same thing a freestyle shooter can. So if more weight is a good thing, why shouldn't you put as much weight as possible? There is an upper limit, and that's you. Remember that you have to lift this bow and pull it back a hundred times or more in a session. You might be doing a competition, there might be 150 shots in total, or you might be doing a training session, you might be doing 200 or 300 arrows. This, after 100 reps, will suddenly become a lot heavier. So you have to consider your endurance. So if you can lift this easily, then yeah, use heavier weights. As long as you balance out the distribution, the balance should not change. So that can be a good thing. But if you're not going to lift this up easily after around 50 shots or 100 shots, then you might consider having a lighter weight setup. And honestly, a lot of people start with this and transition to this will find that the weight is way too tiring for the shoulder and the arm. So take it easy to begin with. Once you've established some conditioning and you know what feels right, then add more weight. The reason why this is really important is that if the weight of the bow affects your form, then you're not going to shoot well. This includes both the draw weight and the weight of the bow itself. And this is often overlooked. What tends to happen is, well for a normal shot, it's a very fine control. From start to finish, you have control of the shoulder alignment, the bow position, and where you anchor. And that's practiced thousands of times. If you find the bow is too heavy, you'll be struggling to lift it up. You'll be struggling to get your shoulder alignment right because it's just way too heavy for you. You come up and you're like, ugh. And you just really struggle. So if this is creating a barrier for you for good shooting, then reduce the weight. And again, don't think about it as your first shot. Think about it as your final shot. If you're having trouble with your final shot, then something needs to change. Interestingly, there is an upper limit as to how much weight you can put on. And that's determined by the structural integrity of your rod. Now for this, I'm going to pull up an anecdote from Mikey. Uh, Mikey is one of my viewers and he shot with me quite a few times and he had a very interesting uh, gaff, I guess. So when he shot with us and I saw his bow, he had a lot of weight on his long rod. It was like seven blocks or something. It was a lot of weight and it was very front heavy. Again, that's not necessarily a problem. You can work around that, but he wanted the extra weight to shoot in the wind. Now that makes a lot of sense. But uh, what happened, and he didn't really notice this to begin with, but he began to realize that each time he shot, the rod would wobble a lot from the extra weight in the front. And eventually, the rod cracked. Wobbling is normal. That is, after all, how the rod absorbs the vibration. But in this case, it was quite excessive and that caused the rod to crack. And I guess in some way, this is where you have the difference between a cheap stabilizer and an expensive stabilizer. You find that the more expensive ones, apart from being fancy, a bit of brand name, they might be structurally better 
for hand heavier weights. Um, this isn't general across the board, but the cheap stabilizers are cheap for a reason. This doesn't mean they're bad, they're usually good enough for a beginner and intermediate shooter, but that's one of the limitations that Mark came across. So in summary, the goal of your stabilizer setup is to bring the weight slightly forward of your grip so that when you are at full draw, the balance is either in the grip or slightly in front, giving you the most stability during your shot process. This center of balance can be changed by how much weight you put on, how long the rods are, and the angles the rods are set at. In general, having stabilizers will give you an edge over a bare bow shooter. You will have more stability and control and therefore more accuracy once you get used to the stabilizers. Most beginners don't need to worry that much about the exact placement of the stabilizers. As long as they have a set, they should see an improvement. And again, once they get past that phase of getting used to the weight of the bow and the stabilizers, they should be okay. Now, the exact fine tuning may be more important for a competitive advanced shooter, where having a few millimeters of difference may cost them points at the other end. As with many things in archery, Getting the exact balance and weight distribution is a matter of experimentation, trial and error, and personal preference. Hopefully, after watching this video, you have a better understanding as to what that means. This is New Sensei, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.